Thank you so much, Amelia, and thank you so much to the People's Assembly team. Please, will you give them a massive round of applause for putting this on today. All of the volunteers, all of the stewards, Ramona McCartney, the national organiser. Absolutely unbelievable effort. And what an 18 months it has been. We have endured so much. The political class in Westminster have failed us. They inoculate themselves against the pain that we suffer. We will not forgive them. And no, we will not be patient against their political ideology, a belief system which sees exploitation, grotesque levels of inequality, the constant threat of war and destitution as a fair price for the protection of a system which serves them so well and the richest so well. We have run out of patience with their system and with the destruction that they wrought. They willfully look away at the housing crisis, at poverty pay. They have encouraged a system of privatisation and fragmentation of our NHS, taking away more and more of our services. They stoke a despicable nationalistic racism and cultivate culture wars to distract us, to divert our attention and obscure the truth. The truth is they refuse to serve our interests and they have disdain for our lives. They are shameful and Boris Johnson, Matt Hancock, Pretty Patel, the lot of them have to be forced out of power by a movement. And I have a message for the leader of the opposition. You have to start opposing this government. You need to take our pain, our grief, take the last decade of austerity and all of the destruction that has caused. Take the injustice done to the Windrush generation and the people of Grenfell Tower and all of those people who have been sanctioned by the DWP. Take the dedication and service of an intensive care nurse and tell them why they do not deserve 15%. Explain why when we know it's possible, it's perfectly possible for them to be paid 15% pay rise. Tell us why there cannot be an end to marketisation in education. It is all possible. The political class know it is possible. And what we are doing today, what you are doing today, is being an opposition. You are the opposition to the Tory government. And I'll finish with this. At the root of our communities is a deep, deep love for one another. We are not the enemies of each other and we will not treat each other as such. We are on a collective journey of discovery, trying to make sense of living in this scary world. Let's be gentle with each other. And to those people who are at home, who have not yet made it to the streets, tell them now, you are welcome in our movement against this government. You will be welcome in our diverse and beautiful movement which knows this we know this there can be a world without war there can be a world without exploitation there can be a world where our seas our forests and the air that we breathe is cleansed of the destruction caused by the unfettered greed of a few and who will deliver that we will deliver that never give up thank you comes from the Justice and Peace project, of course, the Peace and Justice project. He needs no introduction. He is the occupier of Downing Street. He's the rightful owner of number 10. He has been our leader. He's still the leader of millions. Jeremy Corbyn. for what you just said and all the work that you do and the incredible leadership that you bring and will bring to our trade unions all over this country. 
And speaking here today as uh, the representative of the Project for Justice and Peace, I want to bring a message to you of this. First of all, I'm so proud to see such a range of organisations and communities and interests in this square here today. People representing the hope of a world of peace, not war. Of a world free of nuclear weapons, not threatened by nuclear weapons. I'm here proud to stand alongside teachers and educational campaigners who bring hope to our children through their skills and are campaigning for proper payments to our schools to help children recover from corona and the way in which they've lost so many educational opportunities. I'm proud to be here alongside health campaigners for all that they do and all that they've done and all that they will do. And I'm also very proud to be here alongside so many people who understand with passion the whole issue of environmental sustainability. I am fearful that uh, COP26 in Glasgow later this year will become an exercise in greenwash, self-aggrandizement before they get into private jets to head off home. The reality is the poorest people in the poorest countries suffer the worst air quality, the worst quality food, the shortest life expectancies and the danger of flooding, pandemics and of course so-called natural disasters. So we have to be serious about campaigning for environmental justice all over the world as well as in this country. Our health service was founded by people with vision. Vision of healthcare free at the point of use as a human right. The current Secretary of State for Health is only interested in handing out contracts to Serco or other companies, privatising our NHS and our Prime Minister said to me in December 2019 I was scaremongering when I said American companies would come in and take over our NHS. Well if I was scaremongering how come Centene now run a GP practice in my own constituency? I say get the contractors out of the NHS! staff the 15% increase they need and deserve. But we, we as a movement are not just about defending the gains that our predecessors made in health, in education, in housing and in so many other areas. We're about taking things further forward. A world of peace, a world of justice. And there's a great injustice that happens when you get older, and all of us one day are going to get older, probably half the people in this square at some point in their lives are going to need social care. I say this to those that are thinking of social care policies. Make social care the equivalent of our NHS and provide it free at the point of need for everybody. If as a country, if as a country we can afford to create more billionaires during a crisis than have ever been created before, we can afford to tax those billionaires to fund the services that we need for the future. That is what justice is about. That is what justice looks like. And here today, all of us, in all our diversity, are a real strength. We will never allow the Islamophobes, the anti-Semites, the racists or anybody else to divide us. We are united as a people demanding a fair and just world. Demanding a world fit for the next generation, for our children to grow up in. Now political power comes from lots of places. 
Yes, of course, there is political power that comes from elected offices. That is absolutely obvious. But those that set out on the road to free education, housing, health care, set out in the southern states of the USA on the road to try and achieve democracy, set out in the colonies of the 19th century to achieve independence, or in the 18th to abolish slavery, didn't hold political office. All they held was the ability to unite each other together in a common cause. So it is up to us. Stay together, be together, be strong and active together. And that will give hope to our generation, the next generation and the generations after that. Stay strong, stay solid. Thank you.